Follow Flahiatsu, good evening. Leading our news bulletin for tonight, Nui's image as a safe destination looks to be tainted with reports of an assault on a visitor over the weekend. The incident involving a female tourist was reported to have occurred late Saturday evening. The assault is alleged to have occurred in a vehicle with three occupants who had picked up the tourists. New police are investigating the incident and various people will be interviewed in the course of the investigation. No charges have been laid against any persons yet. However, the new police endeavour to have the investigation completed by the end of the week. Niue's celebration of 37 years of self-government was held last week, the highlight being the flag-raising day held at the Parliament House in Sialikula Lofi on the 19th of October. The turnout was quite reasonable with great attendance from visiting groups of Niueans from New Zealand as well as locals who set aside the afternoon for this very important day. The program was hosted by the new Speaker of the Assembly, Aohiva Levy, and proceeded as normal with the arrival of dignitaries such as former premiers, the ministers of the new cabinet, as well as the New Zealand High Commissioner and the acting premier. This was followed by the hoisting of both the New Zealand and new flags in recognition of the special relationship between the two countries. A slight hiccup with the new flag left the crowd in an awkward silence, but that was overshadowed by the celebratory messages from the New Zealand High Commissioner Mark Blumsky and the Acting Premier Honourable Poto Spili, both highlighting the desires of both governments to further develop the relationship based on a mutual understanding and the hope for further cooperation. Over the past 37 years, we have a unique arrangement that binds us together in shared history, common citizenship and people-to-people -people connections. And what a ride those 37 years have been. A wonderful journey that has seen your country become the envy of many in the Pacific. Nui is a maturing country that has developed a quality of life second to none. Today, economic development remains as your core ambition, an ambition New Zealand is very supportive of. The creation of a successful tourism industry has been the main focus, the main focus of New Zealand's support in the last couple of years. And as our minister has said, New Zealand is committed to ensure that the necessary funds are committed to resource this development. If that is what you want, if that is what Nui wants. New Zealand recognises that our assistance must reflect the government and people of Nui's vision and aspirations for your own development. On behalf of the people of Nui, we thank New Zealand and her people. For without the New Zealand people's support, through the generous contributions from your government, we will not be where we are today. At the age of great things, finally for our people and country, what is good for New Way is also good for New Zealand. Thank you for helping us build a sound economic base using the very abundant, beautiful resources that we have. A big thank you to the people of New A, the village council and various communities for help to remain and rebuild New A. This is our home and we must take care and ourselves who want to remain here. Our vision for New A is New A, Ke Monuena, a prosperous New A. And the people are fundamental in making new way prosperous. Go out and take advantage of the opportunities there now. The builders, the plumbers, the electricians, there is plenty of work and money to share with the community. Public servants. We are working to transform the public service to improve ways on how to better serve our country 
and its needs so we can increase your pay. But we need your support and you must help and work with us. We can achieve this for you so we can all prosper. We have not forgotten the private sector and will reform income tax and dependence allowance to help families, particularly those earning less than 20,000 a year. We will make provisions to increase the old folks' pensions, for they are the people who have built new way for many years and who are our tupuna. Premier Tokitalangi's absence at this year's celebrations did not diminish the will of the people to celebrate. As acting Premier Pokoto Sipili highlighted in his speech, there are many accomplishments over the past few years, as well as government's desires for development made possible with the generous donations from neighbouring countries, governments and organisations. With the formalities aside, it was time for the celebrations and songs and dances from the newer high school culture group, reviving some of the old tunes, as well as some new dances, especially for the day. An appearance from Miss Niwe Aotearoa and Bapatutawe also brought both communities closer. There was also a surprise performance from a New Zealand-based Cook Island dance troupe with Niwean heritage. They brought the crowds to the forefront, dancing to their beats, Yet another successful celebration of constitution, marking 37 years of self-government and free association with New Zealand. <laughs> Avaseli did not disappoint as they pulled off a spectacular show day that kick-started constitution celebrations on Saturday the 15th of October. Crowds were treated to a variety of delicacies and treats on sale as they roamed around Leolo school grounds in search of bargains. During the official opening, the Avaseli Member of Parliament, Billy Talangi, commended his community for their support, but also voiced disappointment as other events held at the same time disrupted the village show days that have been pre-planned, a problem which is becoming more apparent. The food crops were plentiful, stalls decorated, but it was the entertainment that stopped the crowds in their tracks. The youngsters came out with routines they've been learning for weeks, as other smaller groups also danced to some island tunes, and the youth pulled out a few new dances and songs especially developed for the show day. Overall, it was a great day for Anasana and a superb start to its first for me. This year's National Show Day celebrations continue to impress many visitors to the island and more so this year as many of the Niuean community abroad arrived for cricket, visiting friends and families as well as the commemoration of Niue's 37th Constitution celebrations. One of the visitors said the show day was very impressive and it would have been more memorable if the whole island attended, but she said what she experienced cannot be done overseas. The customary activities such as food stores, judging of handcrafts and agricultural products joined the flurry of entertainments. The National Show Day has always been the expectancy to deliver the most wonderful cultures of ethnic groups living in Niue. Miss Niue Aotearoa opened the entertainment. This year was no disappointment for the locally based groups as the youngest group of Ricardo Williams and Shiloh Parsisi opened with a wonderful Cook Island number followed by the Tuvalu community and their exciting beats. The Philippines community also maintained the tradition. 
of joining the national show with an extra few numbers. The Tongan community, who have always been a favourite, continued with their beautiful cultural performances, including whole families and the youth. And to finish off the entertainment, a special appearance from a touring Tailangi Cook Island performance group ended the day with some fantastic crowd moving numbers. The National Show Day ended with a couple of tabloid sports activities. <laughs> Hello Village Annual Show Day was fairly quiet this year with the rain and other events held on the same day, which begs the question of why other events were scheduled that coincided with another annual event. The trends over the years is the consideration of annual events because of patron numbers. However, this year it seemed somewhat unavoidable, causing less numbers at some show days. One show patron said, there must be an understanding with organisers to realise the importance of annual events, considering the number of people on the island and the work put in by families to ensure the success of the village events. Even though numbers were short compared to previous years, the show day continued with speeches and performances from the Mutalo children. Mutalo, well known for handcrafts and agricultural products, can still boast the best results. With a variety of products on display, patrons were still enthusiastic about. The organisers of the event wish those who braved the rain a wonderful day and look forward to 2012. Ecclesia Cristiano Niwe continued the constitution celebrations with two major events on Saturday as well as yesterday. First, the investiture of Hakupu Pastor Rev. Ingosia Tama Mokole, President of Ecclesia Cristiano Niwe Rev. Arthur Pihingia, said he would like to extend his gratitude to Reverend Mokole, who decided to accept the recommendation from Hakupu. This was, of course, endorsed by President Pihingia and his executive committee. He said not only will Hakupu benefit from his return, but Niue will also gain benefits with the government's push to encourage Niueans to return home. Reverend Pihingia said it was always a bonus when people decide to return and this new addition to the community is always appreciated. Reverend Inga Mukule, who is of Anglican background, arrived back home with his family of six. We wish them all the best back home. Continuing with the Ekalistia program, the Pena Mina Day was also commemorated yesterday. Ekalistia Carisiano President Reverend Arthur Pingia said he also wished to acknowledge the continuing support of the people and to recognize continuing efforts by many in our historical ties. People must also consider the theme of the day in relative to one's existence and continue to develop in the spiritual sense. Reverend Pingia said Ekalistia has continued to support the special day which raised just over $40,000. And lastly, kids are back at school today for what will be the fourth and final term for the year. After two weeks of holidays, youngsters are relieved to be back at school for another seven weeks before the year is out. As for the seniors of Newer High School and those taking NCEA level studies, they will have two weeks of school before going on study break to prepare for exams that will start on the 10th of November. Teachers are encouraging students to continue and maintain their efforts that will hopefully pay off as prize giving day looms near. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.